going to do a, a video on um, redoing my, my stairs. So basically, I replaced the stairs were, were before they're just carpeted stairs with some um, pine treads on them. And so I've replaced them and I put on uh, the new treads, which are, are oak treads, um, new risers, new uh, uh, the baluster, the, the rails, and um, the new little post. Um, so when I, when I did this project, I wasn't planning on doing a YouTube video, so I, I didn't actually have any video of it. But I did take a bunch of photos during, the, during when I was um, doing the rework. Um, so I'll kind of run through them. I'll just narrate them. Um, I, there's a lot of details that I, that I won't have because I didn't really plan this out. But if you have any questions on, on anything on here, just uh, put them in the comment section, and I'll try to answer them. So I, I decided to add this um, additional detail in after I did the first video, so hopefully this helps out. Hey, I didn't add this on the original video, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip this in, but I, after I thought about it, probably some critical things in here which I didn't mention originally, so I wanted to go through these. So, um, again, this is the, the retro tread that I used. Um, I bought it at Lowe's. Uh, they, they, they come in basically different widths. I think this was, I've ordered 42 inch, and you're gonna basically cut those down to size. Um, when you, when, and when you cut these, um, again, I kind of mentioned in the, in the other part of the video, but it's real critical when you cut these that you, you, you uh, specifically for the, so the stairs don't have the returns on them, your upper stairs, because you really want to get this, this honeymoon fit in there. You don't want the gap. So you really need to use that gauge tool that I showed in there. So the gauge tool will let you get in there, measure it, and mark these guys so you can, you can cut them exactly because you're, you're, you're um, the, the stairs aren't going to be perfectly square on the edge on the sides, and you're gonna you're they're gonna they're gonna have some sort of a deviation. So you really want to get that in in this cut. So very critical that you get that right if you really want it to look right. Um, so this this guy had is basically five eighths inch thick, um, and then it's got this nose that's basically that's on it, and the nose has got a profile on it as you can kind of see, um, and so this is kind of my drawing to show you. Some of the real details I ran into, and some of the challenges. So I, I really want to make sure I I, I met my met the code because there's some real kind of details of, of stairs that you have to follow code on. And one of the, the the issues I was concerned about, but end up in the end it didn't wasn't a problem. But is the um, your riser height. <clears throat> so the code specifies that your riser height, basically from your step to the next step. It's supposed to be seven and three quarters of an inch, um, and along with that, there's another um, requirement that not not only seven and three quarters of an inch, but the maximum difference between any step um, can't be more than five eighths of an inch. So I I, I kind of looked at mine and the issue I was concerned about. Well, on the floor, basically, because I was replacing a vinyl floor and I was putting in tile, so I'm basically raising the bottom floor up. Well, I'm like, well, that's going to come up, so I got to make sure I I. I have enough height to add it to the next step um, to uh, cancel that that out. So in the end, it ended up working out right because so basically, I took off my vinyl, which is about eighth inch added height on there for the vinyl, and I replaced it with I used quarter inch uh, hardy backer um, thin set, which added maybe about an eighth inch with a thin set, and then the, the tile, which is about three eighths of an inch. Um, so when you actually do, do the math. So basically, I added three quarters inch with with my new flooring, but then you can take an eighth of an inch away for the for the vinyl, and add some five eighths of an inch. Well, fortunately for me, these treads are actually five eighths of an inch thick, so it, it's some the, the 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 net change is basically zero. So this first this first step is basically going to be um, well, I guess I measured it out. It's about seven and five eighths. <clears throat> Um, and then the, the next, the next treads that I, and I, would, I measured on my, my, my finish are about seven and three quarters, between seven and five eighths and seven and three quarters. It varied a little bit. Um, one of the challenges I ran into was, was the top one because of my, my final step. I'm stepping onto my floor upstairs. Well, I ended up redoing the floor up there. I replaced that with a laminate. Well, the laminate added enough. It actually was a little, little less. It was about about seven and a half inches for my final one, which still maintains the, the minimum of five eighths inch. So my my maximum difference between steps is seven and a half and seven and five eighths. So I'm so I'm only off by 
spacing by an eighth of an inch. Right, I'm sorry, seven and three quarters. You're off by about a quarter of an inch. So still within the five eighths inch um, code. Um, so here, this is the old. So basically, here was the the old steps. They were just pine. They had these the the, the stubs that stuck out at, out of the end. These were they. It was about an, eight, an inch an inch of depth on each of these stubs from the from the uh, um, back of the riser. So that's where I had to cut those off because I had to trim those back to put the, the new retro tread on. So I cut off almost a half an inch off the nose of each one of these. Um, and then what I did is I added, so I, le I left it about a half an inch of gap on the, between, between so I could put this, this MDF in here. So I put a half inch MDF in behind. So you can, so the, uh, um, again, the net change in the tread depth, because the tread depth is supposed to be the code, which you know, it varies, you know, on municipalities. But by me, the code is about is 10 inch. Um, you have to have a minimum of 10 inch tread depth. Um, I've got about 10 and a quarter inches of tread depth, and I actually did again. In, in the end, I didn't really add or subtract any depth because I basically removed I removed a half an inch from the nose, and then I pushed out a half inch this way, which is an inch. Well, these these um, the retro tread actually adds an inch for the nose, so that the net gain is basically zero again. So um, my my tread depth was 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 within code. Um, so it, it, one other thing I should note too. So when I, when I put these treads on, the way I applied them, I basically um, I used uh, uh, liquid nails and applied the liquid nails. I put them down and then I, sh I shot um, uh, finish nails through the back, so I could I could nail this guy in the back where it was going to be covered by the MBF. So just on the back end of it, I could I could nail it in. The rest of it was just pressed down, um, and I just uh, glued them in. So they uh, they seem to they seem to be pretty good. I've had them down for quite a while. There's there's not a lot of squeak in there, so everything seemed to, to work out well. Um, so. Hopefully that helps you out. Again, I, I just want to add this detail because I know there's, these are some of the questions I ran into and I assume you're probably going to have the same. So if you have any other questions, I, I hope I might be able to answer them. So just, just leave me a comment. Um, I'm pretty good at, at getting back to you guys pretty quickly on those. So uh, hopefully I can help you out. So here's the, the beginning of, a, of it. I've got the carpet taken off. And you can see there's some of the pad, the yellow stuff as a padding, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt because it's all stapled down, and there was tons of staples to pull out. Um, so it was it was it was a lot of work to get all the staples and get all cleaned up. Um, this is just kind of showing close up, so you can see you know all the little pieces of staples and stuff you had to pull out to to get that padding off. And just just a view showing all the carpeting gone. Another view from the side. Um, showing you you got the basically your turns on here, which kind of are a challenge for this is you have to do the both the, both the left and right returns have to be replaced. Um, and you can see in here there's there's a um, where I'm going to put the treads. The nose has to be removed on the existing stairs. So basically, what I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that end of that nose so it, it'll be about a half inch. Uh, in depth when I get done. So here's my skill saw that I use. I basically had it set up. I put a spacer in there so I could cut the right depth on that nose. And I went and basically stripped or cut down each of the noses for the for all the steps on the on the the bottom side. Then after that, you can see now now the piece will sit there flush up with my half inch spacer, which will which will be the uh, the the back on the stairs. The thing you did when I did this, when you remove that nose, you, you get this gap because that nose was, was actually inserted inside of the, the, the risers. Um, this is just the material I used, the Bondo that I used. So I bondoed up each of those. Um, so once I was done, I could just paint those. Um, so here's basically everything, all the noses all removed from all the, all the treads. Um, and then this is a view from the other side again just kind of just for my own use I was trying to get make sure I had everything spaced right and how it was going to fit 
So, and it, there's one of the returns. Again, that was kind of the challenge to get the returns just right because um, you have to cut treads to size. So here, here's kind of a dry fit I had made up, cut the treads already um, and put the returns on both the left and the right. Um, these are the risers, which I just, I used MDF and I just painted them white. Um, and I used a, uh, the kills on there as my, basically as my, uh, um, just the starter. This is the, the tool I use to, to cut the treads with or to, to mark out. They all have to be the right, the perfect width. And so there's, there's the sides of it where I've started painting where it used to just be that, that honey oak. Um, again, more, more on the, on the sides. I, I had paint, I painted that too, which is also just the honey oak. Another view, and the dogs looks very excited to be there. Um, and then this, this is the other side. The dog seems to like that area. The sun comes through and she hangs out. And then finally, just going to view up. And this is about when I'm getting ready to, to put all the uh, the treads on. <clears throat> so this is just a showing the 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 noodle post and, and the rails. I had to cut and get them just the right size and the right height. Um, here's after I've stained everything, so I have all the treads, certain all the or all the treads and um, everything all and all the pieces all stained up. And there's the noodle posts and some of the railing. Um, that I that I had to stain. So here's here's one of the one of the first ones when I put on the very top one that I put in, and you can see there's very little gap on the right and left again. That's that's kind of the challenge, and that's what those those plastic um, guides were used to get that just right. That's the bottom. Looking at the bottom side, and I got a few more treads installed, and I'm kind of just working my way up. And you'll see that all it's kind of the same stuff. That's pretty much all of them on. Looking down on it, um, there's there's beginning with just the noodle post and, and some of the railing on, and how it attaches to the to the lowest tread. Um, now I got a couple of balusters I'm sticking in there. Just so here's the final uh, product of of the job. So it came out pretty well. Um, lots of challenges here and there. As you can see, there's also some other work I did. I've I've added the tile floor, added all the trim. Um, on the ends of those, the the risers, because those are actually exposed and it's MDF, I actually have a, a piece of molding that I, I cut to cover those up. So you you would you would you don't want to see that, and you can't really paint that stuff on the on the end grain. So um, it it was a it was a challenging project. It took a lot longer than than I thought it was. I spent probably a, a it was probably a few weeks in length. I just worked on it here and there for a few hours between all the staining and painting and and time to wait for things to dry it. It was just a kind of a long, longer process than one would think. But um, in the end, I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, it uh, it definitely has some challenges, specifically getting the right cuts um, made to uh, to get the risers or the, not the right well the risers too, but also the treads the right width. Um, and you really you really got to get a honeymoon fit on those risers or. Any sort of gap will will definitely show, and it and it will um, kind of make your job look pretty unprofessional. So uh, I, I was shooting for a gap of I almost wanted you know a zero gap, whichever you wants, but um, you definitely want to be under a thirty second of an inch. If you have anything greater than that, you're going to see that gap, um, and it's just going to make your job kind of look uh, amateurish. So. Uh, good luck. I hope this job works out for you if you decide to do it. Again, any questions, please drop them in the comment section and I will try to answer them. And uh, good luck.